Deuteronomy chapter 20. When thou goest out to battle against thy enemies, and see his horses, plural, and chariots, plural, and a people, plural, more than thou. So here comes a whole military force. Be not afraid of them. That's kind of hard standard. It's amazing how a lot of things Jesus Christ did and said were impossible. He told a man with a withered hand, stretch forth thy hand. He told a man bound in his bed, get up. And I don't know if you saw multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of army men, fierce weaponry, horses and chariots designed for battle. You would think you get a little spark of fear. And God says, do not fear them. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Again, look back at what God done in Egypt. Look what God has done for you in the wilderness. There is no reason why Israel should fear with all the signs, the wonders, and the miracle works that God's done for them. They have seen enough, they have witnessed enough to know they are in the perfect hands of God. Is with thee, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. See? Remember what happened in Egypt? Remember that army that drowned Pharaoh and his army? They had chariots, they had horses, they were fierce. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priests shall approach and speak unto the people. So, you're gathering your forces. Now, when we really first get introduced really to David, he's sent by his father into the camp with King Saul and the Philistines and Goliath. And when they read those battles, you do not read the priest coming out and giving that pep to Israel. And you see all Israel under King Saul. They are fearful. They are afraid. They are running over the Jordan River. It shall be when you come nigh to the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Don't be afraid. Fear not. And do not tremble. <laughs> don't think with your hearts. Don't fear and don't tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. Don't you think verse 3, it just, there's no room for fear. Don't tremble. Don't fear. Don't let your heart faint. Be strong. God is with you. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. End of paragraph. God is right there with you. And he's going to fight. He's going to use you and your weapons against it. Because the enemies of Israel are the enemies of God when God told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will curse them that curse you. So if an enemy comes up against Israel, they're cursed. And God will cast that curse upon them by blessing Israel with victory. And the officers, now we're going from the priests, now we're going to the military heads. The officers shall speak unto the people saying, What man is there that has built a new house? And has not dedicated it. Let him go and return unto his house. Lest he die in battle. And another man dedicate it. Alright. His mind going to be on that house he built. I spent all that money. I spent all that time. I'm going to die in battle. I'm not going to enjoy it. And 
And the word dedicated, you see there, and dedicate, those are the first two times that those two words show up, and they show up in the same verse. I'm going to dedicate my baby. Well, the first time, the law, the first time it shows up is talking about a house. Verse 6. What man is he that has planted a vineyard? Vineyard is a type of Israel. Grapes. And has not eaten of it. Grapes. Let him also go and return into his house. Lest he die in battle and another man eat of it. So here's two cases. You built a brand new house? Go enjoy it. Bye. You planted a vineyard and you haven't had any parts of it? Go. Bye. You can go. Because your mind is not going to be on God. <laughs> your mind is not going to be on the battle. You're going to be thinking, oh, I wish I... So there's two causes in a military campaign by the chiefs, the captains, the officers, or the people say, you can go. See you later. Why? We'll see in a few moments. A couple more verses, we'll see totally why. And what man is there that has betrothed a wife? And has not taken her. Well, you know how many American camp campaigns of war where the men were right to their sweethearts at home, never married, or just gotten married, gotten married because they're going overseas, and has not taken her. Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. And what is, you got your mind on the home. You got your mind on the business, the vineyard. You got your mind on your wife. Your mind is not going to be occupied on war. It's going to be preoccupied home. You are excused from duty. Now, it's interesting if you go to chapter 24, verse 5, Deuteronomy. There's another clause here. 24, verse 5, and this... Different laws and regulations of the land of Israel in the land. 24.5 When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. Now this was added afterwards. Maybe someone sat down and prayed to God and said, God, you know, maybe it's just a good idea that he didn't go. I don't know. I could be totally wrong. He shall not go out to war. So he is not able to go to war. Neither shall he be charged with any business. That's the vineyard. That's the man who betrothed the wife. That's a man who has started the business of vineyard. And can also be a house because he had to build a house for his wife. Now watch. But he shall be free at home. There's the house. It would be standard for you for a man to build a new house for his new wife. To her liking. To his liking. He shall be free at home one year. Three hundred and sixty days. And shall cheer up his wife which she had taken now what's the cheer up she's just left her family she's just left her her dad her mother her brothers and sisters probably not ever going to see them again according with the bible and the bible says for this newlywed couple let those two remain together a honeymoon one year long there it is And it's funny how that one verse occupies verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7 of what we're reading. In verse 8. And the officers shall speak further unto the people. And they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Gideon tried that, and man, look how many people he lost. And judges. Are you afraid? Are you faint-hearted even though after the priest gave you the pet? Yeah, I'm afraid. Let him go and return unto his house. Look at that. 
Now, these are not your modern Americans today. These were well-bred, fierce soldiers. They would not be afraid, and if they did, they would. it would be not enough fear to say, I'm out of here, goodbye. These men would be hand-to-hand -hand combat. They wouldn't use a weapon. You pull the trigger, their weapon would be, there is the guy right in front of them as you stab him in the heart, as he slits your arm. Let him go and return to his house. Leaves his brethren's heart faint, as well as his heart. So the Bible says fear is contagious. Get rid of those that are afraid in your ranks. They're not going to help. The man that's got his mind on his home is not going to help. The man that's got his mind on his business is not going to help. The man that's just married is not going to help. The man that is fearful, he's not going to help. Get rid of him. Now you got men who've got their minds nothing on winning and on the Lord. Now maybe this, maybe the next battle they're ready to go, but this one, and it shall be, when the officers had made an end of speaking unto the people, so the priests speak to the people, and then the officers speak unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. Here's the peace op option. You approach the city, and hey, listen, you guys want to make peace? This is your opportunity. It shall be if it will make if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found. Looks like some people are going to hide. Run. Therein shall be tributaries, taxes. They can pay, pay for the, unto thee, and they shall serve thee. Now, I got two places here. Look, look at Luke 14 31. Check out these two references Luke 14 31. Fourteen thirty-one, and here we have another decree set out by Jesus, an age-old practice. For what king going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth? That's the first time and last time that word shows up. Will he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him, or with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, and sendeth an ambassage, first time, last time that shows up, and desired conditions, first time and last time that shows up, of peace. So here's a king, here comes a war. Okay, I guess it. How many do they have? How many do I have? I ain't got enough. I gotta make peace. Now the law spoke about. When he approached that city, offer that peace right away. First thing before you start the war, offer them peace. If they take it, then let them become tributaries. And I'm checking out Acts 12 20. Alright, back to Deuteronomy. And anybody in that city, they're serving. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. That's the first time that word shows up, besiege. And when the Lord thy God has delivered it into thy hands, mark that with verses 1, 2, and 3. <coughs> it's the foreknowledge of God. You won the battle. Thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. So they don't grow up and they don't take revenge on you. You killed our, you killed our families, we're going to kill you. But the women, and the little ones, and the cattle, 
and all that's in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thy enemies, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I mean, everything they got, you can eat it. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far away from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. If they are not in the land of Cana, Israel, they're outside those borderlands. You can go up to them and say, hey, you guys want peace or do you want to fight? But of the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God does give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Humans and animals. In that land, they don't do that in the book of Joshua, and they don't do that in the book of Judges. Every human being. Why? They're involved in wicked, perverse sins. That's why they're being driven out of the land. Why the animals? Because animals have been given to GODSs. Animals have been involved in uh, sex. Animals have been perverted. The people are perverted. Kill them all. You don't eat of their food either. But thou shalt other destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. That will be in the area where Jerusalem is. As the Lord thy God has commanded thee, that thou teach you not to do after their abomination. Which they have done unto their gods. There's a small G-O-D-S. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. You wipe them all out. Because if you don't. They're going to teach you the fallen gods. And they do. Joshua. Judges. And all the Old Testament. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time. And making war against it to take it. Thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them. For thou mayest eat of them, these are fruit trees, and thou shalt not cut them down. For the tree of the field is of man's life to employ them in the seed. You make money off the apples, you make money off the figs, you make money off the olives. Don't kill those trees, don't destroy them. Only the trees which thou knowest are that they be not trees for me. They have no nuts. They have no uh, fruit. Thou shalt destroy and cut them down. Thou shalt build bullocks. Bullocks, excuse me, bullocks. Against the city. To make war with thee. Until it be subdued. So when you need instruments to build and attack a city. Do not use the fruit trees. And nut trees. Use trees that have, and I would even assume trees that had sap. Like you wouldn't use a maple tree because that has fruit. The fruit is a sap for maples. 